Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with two fires that broke out in Bakersfield over the weekend. A large fire broke out early this morning at a house in downtown Bakersfield. According to the Bakersfield Fire Department, it happened just after midnight on 17th and D Streets. Crews found the home in heavy smoke and flames. BFD says the home appeared to be vacant, but appeared to have transient activity. No one was injured in the fire. BFD is working to figure out the cause. And another fire broke out on Union Avenue just after 10 o'clock Saturday night. Firefighters were called to 34th Street and Union for this blaze. It took multiple crews to put out the fire. Bakersfield Fire says they found that the previously burned building was in flames. The roof was partially collapsed. BFD says no one was injured. Arson units were called to the scene and investigating the cause of that fire. Now from our 17 follow-up file, Tina Marie's is getting a major makeover after the fires last December that burned down most of the cafe. Two fires back to back resulted in major loss for business owners in downtown Bakersfield, specifically for Tina Marie's Cafe. But now, more than a month later, the future's looking bright. Sherman Gross, the property owner of Tina Marie's, told 17 News he plans to make the cafe bigger and better than it was before. We are rebuilding. This space will be Tina Marie's, and actually the space next door will also be Tina Marie's. So we'll, we will be expanding into the uh, neighboring building. The demolition company has been working for weeks to empty out the inside of the building. Tina Marie already has a vision for this big empty space. She says she's working with the owner to make that vision a reality. Next door <clears throat> will be expanded into uh, a banquet room and hopefully an indoor outdoor dining area. I mean, we already have our skylight, so <laughs> it, it's really exciting. <laughs> she says the rebuild will take at least a year. The demolition should be complete within the next couple of weeks and then they will begin to rebuild. Now it's been 43 days since three year old Orson and four year old Orrin West were reported missing in California City. Chief of Police Chief says they have not found anything yet. This morning, police and federal agents were back out at the California City home using special equipment to what they called X-raying the ground in the backyard. The tool is used to make sure they didn't miss anything the first time they checked the backyard. The chief says they did not find anything today. For them to just disappear out of the backyard without anyone seeing or anyone knowing is, uh, is first of all, it's very frustrating. Um, it's very tragic and um, it is, it's, it's a major mystery. We as a department, we as a community, we as a city, we're emotionally involved in this thing. You know, we consider those kids our kids and we're not used to this kind of thing happening in our town. The reward for anyone with information on the boys is at $100,000. Police Chief John Walker says his department is still following up on every tip. Anyone with information can call the California City Police Department at 760-373-8606. To remain anonymous, you can call the Secret Witness Hotline at 322-4040. And the Bakersfield Police Department needs your help in identifying an armed robbery suspect. Bakersfield Police says the armed robbery happened on January 13th at the Dollar Tree store on 8th Street. The suspect is described as a black male, 5'9", 210 pounds, in his mid-30s. He was last seen wearing a black knitted cap and a plaid blue jacket, gray sweatpants, black shoes, and he was armed with a silver pistol. If you know who this man is, call BPD at 327-7111. Now to our continuing coverage of the coronavirus pandemic here in Kern County. Kern Public Health announced another day of no new deaths from COVID-19. The death toll remains at 624 lives lost. It's important to note that most of the recent deaths we've reported are people who died in December. The latest numbers now put December as the second deadliest month since the beginning of the pandemic, with August being the deadliest month so far. Public Health also reported 354 more people have tested positive for coronavirus. 306 people are in the hospital, hospital according to state data. Currently, nearly 25,000 people are isolating at home with the virus. And coronavirus cases may be dropping in California, but deaths continue to surge. This weekend, the state surpassed another grim milestone. 
40,000 deaths. Now, this newest death toll mark comes as the state's steepest rise in cases actually begins to taper. According to data collected by Johns Hopkins University, the state's recent decline in cases and hospitalizations belies a record pace of continued deaths. It took six months for California to record its first 10,000 deaths, then just four months to double that to 20,000, five weeks later, 30,000, and then only 20 days to reach the 40,000 mark on Saturday. Only New York has more deaths, but at this pace, California will eclipse that too. Meantime, the Super Bowl is usually a time for big parties, but a local hospital is asking you to sit this one out. Adventist Health Bakersfield, Delano, and Tehachapi Valley are asking people to please avoid big gatherings to prevent another spike in coronavirus cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Ronald Reynoso points out past holiday weekends have led to huge increases in deaths and infections. About 140 local, locals have died in December alone. And you can support your team without spreading COVID by just celebrating with the people you live with. And just a reminder, Kern Public Health's website has a vaccine schedule that shows you when you are eligible to receive the shot, plus an interactive map of providers offering the vaccine. If you are eligible, you can find the site nearest you and call them to make an appointment. A little more than 43,000 doses of the coronavirus vaccine have been administered here in Kern County. And the coronavirus mass vaccination sign at the fairgrounds is accepting appointments for this week. Kern Public Health says currently healthcare workers and those 65 and older are eligible for the vaccine. They are accepting appointments for this Wednesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. To schedule one, call 868-0165. And Houchin Community Blood Bank continues to offer a financial incentive to help restock its depleted blood supplies. Houchin says it desperately needs all blood types. Houchin says right now their supply of B and AB blood are low. They're also asking for platelets, plasma, and COVID-19 convalescent plasma. We're down. We're very low today. Our inventory is pretty much non-existent. We're able to meet the demands of our, of our local hospitals, um, but we are we're lower than we've been since this uh, pandemic started. If you donate plasma platelets or convalescent plasma, you'll be entered into a daily drawing for a $250 gift card. They'll be offering these gift cards through Friday. Houchin is also offering another incentive. They have four donated gift baskets up for grabs. Those who donate will receive a raffle ticket and place it in what basket they want. The winner will then be chosen at the end of the month. For more information or to make an appointment, head to hcbb.com. Now, coffee lovers rejoice. It's free coffee Monday at Dunkin'. Dunkin' Donuts reward members can get a free medium hot coffee with any purchase every Monday in February. To take part in free coffee Mondays, DD Perks members can order ahead via the Dunkin' app or have their loyalty ID QR code scanned before they pay. And Cinnabon is offering the perfect way for a couple of, couple of sweethearts to celebrate this Valentine's Day. A sweet treat bundle including two classic rolls with two cold brewed iced coffees. Starting at just $15 for a limited time, you can get it delivered straight to your door. Starting today through Valentine's Day through your favorite food delivery service. And to further sweeten the deal, all first-time Cinnabon orders on DoorDash will receive free delivery on any Cinnabon order through the end of the month. And some Chick-fil-A favorites are now packaged just for Valentine's Day, including the 30-count Chick-fil-A nuggets, 10 chicken minis, or 6-count chocolate chunk cookies, or 12 chocolate fudge brownie halves. These special heart-shaped trays will be available at participating restaurants and for delivery where available for a limited time through Saturday, February 13th. Check the Chick-fil-A app or contact your local restaurant to confirm availability. And a restaurant that raises money for charity just unveiled its Valentine's Day menu. The Guildhouse in downtown Bakersfield is offering a Valentine's Day dinner. Order by February 12th to pick up chicken cordon bleu, rice and sautéed veggies, plus chocolate cake and chocolate-covered strawberries. You'll be able to pick up your order on Valentine's Day from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Meals are $35 per customer. Call 345-5478 to order. And McDonald's turns up the heat. Spicy Chicken McNuggets and Mighty Hot Sauce are back at participating McDonald's restaurants nationwide today. 
McDonald's first added the heat to the first classic McNuggets last fall, the first flavor invention since the product's debut back in 1983. They were an instant hit, and fans took to social media to ask the chains to bring back the spicy McNuggets. As an added bonus, beginning tomorrow, customers can get a free six-piece spicy chicken McNuggets exclusively through DoorDash on an order of $20 or more using the promo code SPICY. In education news, the Bakersfield City School District is looking to fill hundreds of positions at their upcoming virtual teacher job fair. BCSD says those interested should apply now to secure an interview for the 2021-2022 job fair. BCSD is currently looking to fill TK through 8th grade positions. They are also looking for special education teachers and single subject teachers in math, science, English and math. BCSD says because of the coronavirus pandemic, teachers who are close to retirement are deciding to leave early, leaving a shortage in their staff. Yeah, in a normal year, um, I say normal pre-COVID, we would we would hire between 150 to 200 teachers. Uh, we anticipate um, probably north of 100 teachers that we'll need this year, if not more. The virtual job fair happens February 20th from 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you are interested in becoming a teacher, you can apply at www.bcsd.com. Now to the unlikely Wall Street disruptors who GameStop gambles have paid off in a very big way. NBC's Jolene Kent has been talking to some of the individual investors who are taking advantage of this unprecedented moment. Some are using GameStop profits to alleviate tight budgets, while well, some parents are using it to teach their kids the value of early investing. Behind GameStop's wild ride are scores of everyday investors from all over the country, disrupting Wall Street's chokehold on the markets. Many Reddit users intentionally banding together to bet on the struggling video game retailer, driving up its sagging stock price. Like the events and the investors parodied over the weekend on Saturday Night Live. So your price should have gone down, but instead it went up the most. So now it seems like the entire system is a joke. Exactly. The goal of these armchair investors was not only to make money, this is an us versus them issue. But some wanted to teach the Wall Street bigwigs a lesson, especially about shorting stocks, which is when you essentially bet on a company's stock to fail. Big money Senator Elizabeth on Warren on CNN and calling for a more transparent market and one that's more open to individual investors. What's happening with GameStop is just a reminder of what's been going on on Wall Street now for years and years and years. It's a rigged game. Investors on social media showing no signs of holding back, putting up this chiding billboard in Times Square. GME is GameStop's stock symbol, and brr is the sound of money being counted. While GameStop has minted plenty of millionaires, many retail investors are using their more modest profits to pay bills, like college student and grocery shelf stalker Daniel Lenoy, who made $1,100 on GameStop and AMC last week. That's real money. That's money I could use to you know, pay off my credit card that I could, you know, keep in reserve in my savings account to pay for future semesters. Other investors include 10 year old Jaden Carr and his I mom, Nina, in Texas. I, just, I saw the price and I was just like, there's no way like this is this can be real. She gave him 10 shares of GameStop for Kwanzaa back in 2019. At the time, it was worth about six bucks a share. I know this kid loves video games, and at the time I was teaching him, you know, financial literacy. She was saying that I basically owned a small portion of the company. When your mom first showed you how high GameStop had gone, what'd you think? Um, why? <laughs> she <had a> lot. <laughs> Jaden made the call to cash out, making more than three grand. What are you going to do with the money that you made on GameStop? I've already saved 2200 of it, and the rest of the 1000 is going to go to invest in work companies like Microsoft, Roblox, and different companies. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.